What's your that's why I don't go home for the holidays story. I don't spend Christmas with my mother anymore because when I was between the ages of 15-17 my parents were in the process of a nasty divorce and so I spent Christmas Eve and morning with my father and then went to my mum's side of the family for Christmas dinner. She was so upset that I had spent half my time on Christmas with my dad that during dinner she didn't sit or speak to me. Later that night as we're getting ready for bed in a room we shared, she was typing on her computer still not having said a word to me up to this point. I asked her to be a little quieter because I was trying to sleep, and then she blew up at me with no warning. Ended with her telling me I ruined Christmas, and my grandpa driving me out to meet my dad at 1am that night. I am forever grateful to my grandfather for taking me out of that horrible situation. I really feel for your grandfather, that must have been a freaking horrible drive, having to protect your grandchildren from your daughter. I never got along with my father, and I live 1500 miles away now, but damn if some of these stories don't make me wanna go visit them because as bad as they were, he ain't this bad. For some reason my brother and his wife and super unfriendly towards us and my extended family including my parents. Just for example my parents drove 8 hours to come see them and they ended up sitting in their hotel room all weekend because he would never make plans or would cancel at the last second. Note my parents supported him financially well into his 30s. So basically every family function consists of my folks coddling to my brother and having him either blow them off or showing up briefly and being a complete butt the whole time. Plus I have a psycho aunt who attacks me at every moment she gets. I think my family has a lot of mental problems. He also may have a drug problem. A relative in my family used to be like that till we found out about his opiate dependency. Simply put, my family is full of grudges and alcohol. Holidays are supposed to be full of good feelings but every time one comes around someone mysteriously pulls up drama from 1992 and just ruins everything. So I'm just going to work. My family and I have never been that close. We feel more like a loose collection of people than an actual family. Once I'd been out on my own for a while there just didn't seem like much reason to go visit strangers I don't connect with. My brother and I are really close, but he doesn't want to be home because of the did you find a nice girl to settle with yet type of questions. The dude is always flying and traveling, he won't rest and settle, and they don't want to understand that. I get it. I love my nieces and nephews, but as the only childless one in the family, I hate that a sentence can't be uttered at family dinners without baby talk, either asking me about my desire to have them, or just gushing over everything the kids are doing and dismissing me if I try talking about my adult only lifestyle. I realized the comments of my extended family resulted in the eating disorder I had in high school. Despite knowing I was sick due to being hospitalized, when I started eating a healthy amount again they would pick on me and tell me it will all catch up to my figure one day. Frick them, you doing the right thing. Cause I want to enjoy the holidays, not spend the entire time listening to the passive aggressiveness of my extended family. This is my experience, I'm a stripper and most of my extended family is pretty hardcore religious. My aunt verbally abused my father then clawed my mother's face, so I beat the crap out of my aunt. Aunt was mad my mother married a white man, we are Italian, and has been with him for 30 years whereas my aunt hasn't had a stable relationship that lasted longer than 4 years. Her children hate her and she is the bully of the family. My grandmother, who was in the room, refused to acknowledge what she had done but had no problem laying into me for fighting her. Being verbally abused while I was digging a grave for my dog on Thanksgiving morning was the last straw I'm pretty sure. A friend of mine got in an argument with her ex just before burying her cat. He had spotted it dead on the road, but didn't retrieve it. So she had to go get it herself. While digging the grave she's crying tears of both anger and sadness, and the cat came up behind her between her legs. The cat she was burying happened to be identical. I don't really have a home to go back to. My dad died when I was 11, my mom when I was 14. I was living on my own before I'd even turned 16. There's my grandparents who took me in for a year until I got my own place, but they're both 85 plus and have countless other grandchildren and great grandchildren, so it sometimes feels like I'm just another grain of sand in the desert. I doubt they hold that opinion. 
both parents have psychological issues. I spent my childhood taking care of the family. Now that I'm an adult and moved away it's time to take care for myself. Good for you. Family is mostly dead. I'm in my 20s. No parents, no brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts that live in the area. No reason to visit my hometown other than my in-laws live there. Going back gives me panic attacks. My dad's family and my step family yeah I will go see. My mom and her family. I haven't spoken to in years. They're a bunch of miserable fricks who want to make you just as miserable as they are. They blow everything out of proportion and if they do something for you they expect something in return. My mother was a narcissist. She got remarried when I was 10 or so and her new man was everything. She had always been abusive, but it was always of the emotional, mental variety. After his unwavering acquiescence of the abuse, he came to agree with it wholeheartedly. He would eventually step up to physical abuse, which, in turn, my mother decided to emulate. When I was 11, his three boys came to stay with us over Christmas break from school. They were showered with gifts. I received none. Their explanation being that I was not a good child like his three. The eldest of his children, who was around 12 at the time, took pity on me and gave me an RC car that had been gifted to him. When I was caught playing with it, it was taken from me. When the eldest explained he had given it to me for Christmas my stepdow slightly reprimanded him and then took me outside while beating me in the head. I was told to stand still and watch as he ran the RC toy over with his big truck. I then had to sleep on the cold cement basement floor for taking presents from his children. I've never celebrated Christmas since. The whole holiday season makes me very emotionally wrecked with bitter intermittent flashbacks of the way I grew up. My parents are hoarders so while I do still see them I refuse to be in their house for more than a minute or two. My husband's family is just far better at making reliable plans than my family so they usually win out. I can't travel all the way across the country to try and see my sister and brother when they refuse to nail down plans more than a day or two in advance. Oh you're coming into town. Cool. Text us when you get here and we'll try and meet up there. When I arrive they forgot they had some other obligation half the time. Sucker. You're almost 50 years old. Buy a freaking calendar. The teenager strategy of I'll go but only if nothing better comes up really actually goes on throughout adulthood. Most of my immediate family is dead. My father is still recovering from destroying his life with drugs and alcohol when his parents died in 2005. He's in his 50s and well below the poverty line. He hasn't talked to me in 5 months now. Longest was 4 years. Mother, stepfather, all grandparents are dead. Instead my friend who took me in when I was gonna end up homeless. His family has had me over for the holidays the last 3-4 years. Your friend and his family sound like really good people. I'm glad you have them. My older half brother and I would go to our moms for Thanksgiving and all that jazz even though she didn't raise us. Our dads or grandparents did. At Thanksgiving of 2000 when I was 14, our stepfather made the mistake of hitting me in front of my brother. Bro nearly killed the man. And we didn't go back for the next holiday. My wife's family is all deceased. The only one left alive on my side is my mother. Whenever we see her, she decides it's time to meddle like heck in our marriage. Last Christmas, after she left, we went to a marriage counselor because things got so bad. The counselor said we are both more than fine and to limit contact with nightmare mother mother-in-law. We no longer see her from her anymore. Moved 1000 miles away from hometown to go to college. Mum told me before I even graduated from high school that I'd better make some friends my first semester, because a round trip flight at Thanksgiving wasn't in the budget. It's not bad. I went home with my roommate last year, and this year I'm staying with my boyfriend. I'm involved with the Macy's parade, so that keeps me busy too. I think if I really wanted to my mom would find a way to fly me back, but I don't mind waiting a few weeks till winter break starts. My mom spends most of her time in the heart of the city, scoping out M and O pits. My dad spends most of his time looking for ways to make money or rip people off to buy O pits. My brother is usually depressed with a needle in his arm. My aunt lives out of town. My uncle is usually beating up his girlfriend or drunk or trying to score someone else's methadone suboxone. With my well-paying job, my cozy apartment, my sanity and peace of mind. 
I just avoid anything with family altogether. Holidays or not. The last time I tried to see my biological dad he threatened to beat my mom to death. Got a DUI for drunk driving home from the bar with me in the car. Tried to sell me to someone at the bar p drunk. Tried to tell everyone I wasn't really his kid he was just humoring me. Tried to emotionally manipulate me against my adoptive father. The person I consider my dad. Tried to buy my love with electronics. Tried to put me on his phone plan so he could track me down anywhere. Etc. This was all in a week or less 10 years ago. Since then he has had multiple random children with random women in jail a few times. He hacked my Facebook account to stalk me and try to get my friends against me so I'd want to move to where he was. We hadn't spoken in 5 years at that point. To the point I had to open a new Facebook account. Accounts for sites don't just get hacked. Unless he got his hands on a password dump. Especially for big sites. Your password would have to be very easy for him to guess. Or, more likely since it was hacked multiple times, he has access to your email account. I wasn't invited because my brother, who strangled me in my sleep in my mid-30s, would be there and my mother did not want him to feel uncomfortable. I mean I would be afraid of not inviting the attempted murderer. Got to stay on his good side. Last trip home found out my mother had been indoctrinated into an Islamic based sect, Reed Cult, whose all knowledgeable and benevolent leader advised, forbid, her not to associate with her agnostic child and grandchild, so you're anyway lots of free time and excess cash this December which is nice. You should try to talk some sense into her, don't let those crazy fricks take her over any more than they may already have. Good people fall into bulls situations sometimes. And sometimes you just need a loved one to show you that you've been trapped in their BS. Stepdad has anger issues, and mom is an enabler type, oh, that's just who he is you know. Just don't make him upset, literally, not figuratively. Every Christmas, stepdad causes a fight. I've learned to think it's funny, and just laugh at his 5 year old tantrums now. Since I no longer depend on them whatsoever, and just leave if he gets pissy, his antics are usually because someone wrapped presents wrong, or opened a present in the wrong order. This was literally the cause of his tantrum once. His tantrums consist of throwing things, breaking things, slamming doors, peeling out the in the driveway, and veins exploding from his forehead. Was scary to watch when I was 10, but now it's just comical. He's in his late 50s now. My cousin's boyfriend just got named to the 30 under 30 list for education. I got a call the list it came out from grandma asking what I was up to then an hour of what I could be doing with my life. I am still in undergrad and he has a PhD. I don't know if I am going home for the holidays yet. Because, like lots of people in this thread, my family were a bunch of abusive, psychologically fricked up self perpetuating buttholes. If you're a grown up and moved out someone struggling with whether or not to attend a family gathering with people like these, do what you need to. If going back and enduring it will help you prove something to yourself, go for it. If going, then changing your mind at any point and leaving will help you realize you're in control now, do that. If there's literally anything that would be more worth your time, do that instead. The holidays are just a social construction. You don't owe anyone who ever mistreated you a goddamn thing. If you're stuck in the situation because they'll call the cops on you for being a minor who won't bout a crappy treatment, don't give up, kid. I called social services once my stepdad choked me out one too many times. If you can think of a safe adult at school and want to reach out to the system, do it. If, like me, you tried the system and it didn't get you all the way out, then just keep yourself safe as best you can. There are people out here who give a crap about the way you're treated. People who survived, and know, like you do, that how your family treats you as freaking wrong. Try to keep your sanity and make it out. You can do it. I did. We did. We're out here. Free from the shithole they tried to stomp us into. And you can make it out, too. Super religious parents. Brother is a once pastor. Now atheist in a poly marriage. Not worth the drama. Once pastor. Now atheist in a poly marriage. Dang. What a change. India based story here. As an North Indian, the Diwali holiday is our most important one. Everyone is supposed to be together at home and celebrate worship and stuff. 
It's also the festival when the goddess of wealth, Lakshmi, is worshipped. My joint family has fricked Diwali up, for all us cousins majorly because it's a constant tussle of brothers with respect to power over the family business and the wealth it has collected over the years. It has gone from the celebration worshipping of wealth to the day of fighting for said wealth. Have stopped being home during Diwali to just dodge this scene. I went home last Christmas, finished work at 8.30pm. Drove the 8 hour drive through the night and made it. I was only going to be there for a few days and this was during a family argument. I saw my immediate family then went to my grandmother's. That night I received a dirty text from my aunt. Feuding with the family. Saying that she's angry I didn't see her and I was rude. Blah. 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 The kicker? She works 100 meters from my mum's place. I didn't know where she lived and she never tried contacting me. When I go back now. I don't tell anyone except the people I want to see. Last time I was there and visited my grandmother, I was blissfully drunk and don't remember it. This year I'm working Christmas day for some sweet. Sweet 2.25x pay. Oh, and favoritism is a huge problem in my family. I get the short end of the stick while my cousins are showered with whatever they want. I can't deal with the unfairness and hate watching my sister be disappointed holiday after holiday. I had to reread this several times because your wording of dirty text through the context right out the window for me ha ha ha. 2. Here's mine. Our first daughter turned 1 shortly before Christmas 95. At that time, my in-laws lived in a town that was approximately a 2 hour drive from us. Mill asked if we'd be staying at their place on Christmas Eve, and we said no, it's kind of difficult with a baby, we'll drive out to join you on Christmas Day. She wasn't happy, but she said fine, but you have to be here by 10am, that's when we'll be opening presents. So, we got up bright and early on Christmas morning, gulped down breakfast, got the baby ready, and got on the road by 6.30am. Driving was a bit slow due to some snow and ice. But we arrived at the in-laws house at 9.50 am. We grinned at each other with relief. We'd done it. We entered the house. Only to stare in dismay and consternation. There was torn wrapping paper everywhere. They'd all opened their gifts without us. My husband isn't one for confrontations normally. But he couldn't help it this time. He cornered his mother in the kitchen and said angrily why didn't you wait for us? We got here on time she said sweetly oh. The kid didn't want to wait. Said kids were my husband's younger sister and brother, who were 26 and 21 at the time. To this day, I'm convinced that she decided not to wait because she was punishing us for not staying overnight on Christmas Eve. Whatever. That told us how much we mattered to her, and after a couple more similar experiences, we put our collective feet down and have been celebrating Christmas Day in our own house ever since. Usual RA said Benesis abuse. My entire life. My mum is a violent narcissist and my dad was more of a violent enabler. I don't have contact with them in general and they don't know where I live. Christmas was always at my grand's house, mum's side, different country, and we'd stay for a week or two. I think every single time we were over, my mum would absolutely lose her crap over something innocuous and start a screaming session. I'd either lock myself in the bathroom to get away, or one time she locked me in there with her so she could continue berating me. Last few times ended with my mild-mannered grand screaming at my mum for ruining Christmas again and she'd actually stop and end up apologizing to her. Never apologized to me, of course. I recontacted my gran after a couple years and I'll visit sometimes. She'll tell me when my mum isn't there so I can visit in peace. My dad never came to Christmas but my most clear memories of him are having me sit on the couch and throwing a ball directly at my face and manically laughing. The last time I went home was to say goodbye to my cats. I'm going to get my wonky nose fixed soon and I hope they're still as miserable as they always have been. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.